welcome back to my channel and if you're new then a little introduction. This is a place to share stories, adventures, and everything I wish I had known before embarking on them. My name is Drina and you're watching From Fiji to Here. Welcome to Cuba. On this beautiful rainy day here today, I thought what better time than to do another story time video about the time I was in Cuba. The land they say is 50 years behind the times. Now, before we dive in, I'm gonna make a disclaimer. This isn't the typical Havana, Cuba video that so many other travelers show. Although that video is one on the to-do list, this specific travel experience was my first time to Cuba and I did stay at a resort. That being said, there's a lot of things I wish I had known prior to going that I couldn't find online. So I thought I would help others try to find it by putting it out there for them. Our story goes like this. From landing in Cuba at the airport, we got on a shuttle bus that took us to our resort. On the way, we went through a couple towns since it was a bit of a drive. And one of them, we learned, has two churches that are on the same square. And on Christmas Eve, the entire town divides into two teams that hold a competition all night long. It has floats and lights, dancing and fireworks. From 9 p.m. until 7 a.m. in the morning, they celebrate what's called La Paranda de Brindos. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. It began when a priest sent children through the town with lanterns and instruments, trying to wake up the villagers so that they would come and attend the Christmas midnight service. From there, it became a tradition and has only grown larger since. We stayed at the Dawa of Cayo Santa Maria, a lovely resort that was not too crowded due to it being the off season. The pools were perfect if you didn't feel like making the trek out to the beach, and there was tons of wildlife all around the resort if you kept your eyes open for them. Nah, there's enough water. You look cute. All right. Ready? Yep. Are you already videoing? Yep. The beach was stunning with options for water sports and activities, although I did spend most of my time just enjoying the natural beauty of the beach and the water itself. is that it was built solely for resorts and tourism. There's a private checkpoint to get onto the island and locals who choose to cross to sell items must get clearance to go through the checkpoint each time. When I travel, I most definitely like to stay busy. And although laying on a beautiful beach is a luxury that I'm grateful to have, I also wanted to be able to experience other adventures as well. Which leads me to my first point of things I wish I could have found more information about prior to traveling to Cuba. You can't pre-book many excursions online in advance. That doesn't mean that there aren't any excursions there because there's all kinds. However, most of them you can't book until you get to the resort and along with this a lot of excursions are only offered on certain days of the week and need a minimum number of registrants for it to continue. A little side note if you're going off resort or planning to buy anything in general in Cuba, the country has two different currencies. The first one being the Cuban convertible dollars, CCD, and the second one being Cuban pesos. CCD is for the tourism industry, while the pesos are the local currency. When we went, the exchange rate was approximately one CCD was equivalent to 25 pesos. With an exchange rate that large, you really want to be sure that when you're getting change, you're not getting the wrong currency. CCDs will never have faces on the bills. Back to our excursion dilemma. 
I had found and read one post about a plane trip to Havana prior to leaving. Um, and it was from another traveler, but they didn't mention when it went, how much it was, etc. So when we arrived, we found out that the trip only takes place on Tuesdays and we had flown in on a Tuesday and we're departing the following Tuesday. So we wouldn't be able to do that. Which then took us to plan B, a bus trip to Havana. This option of doing a bus trip to Havana was offered twice a week, Wednesdays and Saturdays. However, there's a minimum registration number of 10 for the trip to go. Seeing as we had gone in the shoulder rainy season of May, only seven people had signed up and the excursion was cancelled. That being said, if you're going during the peak season, it shouldn't be a problem with the influx in number of tourists. Um, more often than not, at least 10 people do sign up for the trip. Not to worry though, we did go on an amazing day-long excursion. The morning started out with going on a boat cruise to snorkel in the reefs. Sierra nor I touched the boat. <laughs> this was followed by lunch on our own boat and then a hike to natural caves on an island where there were tons of holes in the ground that vegetation had grown over. It was one of those moments where you really wanted to be sure to stay on the path and our guide even made a joke about not venturing off to use the bathroom. 
On our tour through the caves, we got to have a lesson on the history of guano and the guano trade. Guano was the accumulated excrement of seabirds and bats, which was being extracted out of the caves in the island by the U.S. to use as a fertilizer in farming, as well as gunpowder and other explosive materials. Our day-long excursion was concluded with driving jeeps through the Cuban outback, for lack of a better description on where exactly we were driving in the country. Now a little side note, if you do choose to do this excursion, the only requirement is that you know how to drive a manual transmission. Now I learned how to drive on a manual transmission and it had been a couple years so I thought maybe I'll be a little rusty, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Prior to getting in the vehicles, our guide had told us that there may be some potholes, maybe some holes in the road filled with water because it was the rainy season, and to just be aware of them. These were not potholes. We were driving through rivers. So not just knowing how to drive a manual transmission, but probably a good idea to feel pretty confident in your abilities and not stalling, otherwise you'll flood the engine, um, as well as being able to go up and down hills, splashing into these puddles and whatnot. Unfortunately, this is the only footage I was able to get because this was pre-GoPro era. Very true. When As someone who was staying in a resort though, this part of the excursion was the best part. It gave you the other side of the island that isn't commercialized for tourism and profit, and the reality where multiple generations are living under one roof, and where there aren't the old 50s cars because it's nearly impossible to afford a car, period. One of the most memorable parts about this excursion was probably on their way back to the hotels when our tour guide decided to open up about his experience and what he did for work before entering the tourism industry. He explained to us how grateful he was for the tourism industry, even though all the profits were contributed to the Cuban military, because it allowed him to feel good about the work he was doing. He was able to make a living without having to cut corners, and by sharing his love for his country, instead of having to do some pretty shady things in order to make ends meet and to afford a house and to feed his family. The tourism industry gave him a better life without him having to sacrifice his morals and beliefs and allowed him to sleep easy at night. And it really got me thinking. Be conscious and be grateful. Realize that even the poorest where you may be is still so much better than the circumstances of others where you may visit. Your dollar for your coffee could be a day's worth of wages for some. Your luxury of a car or transit system is generations of savings for others. And what you come to see as vacation, some will likely never see in their entire lives. This is a privilege. You're so much luckier than you may have realized. Indescribably lucky. Going forward, here would be my advice if you're planning on visiting Cuba. Staying in an Airbnb situation allows the money you're paying to actually go towards a local family. The same with renting the old-fashioned cars as a taxi. Those can be an entire family business as an old Russian car costs anywhere from 30 to 45,000 of convertible dollars. When you consider the exchange rate between the convertible dollars and pesos, it's even more. And although a lot of the cars do belong to the state, you'll want to check. So if the license plate has blue on it, then it belongs to the government. Our last full day there, we had the chance to go to a market. And although it wasn't as easy to get there as we had planned, it was extremely worth it to have the opportunity to see local culture, taxis, the drivers, as well as the vendors.
give a thumbs up this story time video. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below, as well as any videos you'd be interested in seeing. Also, if you like the video, be sure to give it that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be notified of more like it, as well as to join me on future journeys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next destination. Thank you.